Hello, and welcome to a special report on the Palyak Fuel Depot as it approaches its lunar orbit insertion point. During its transit to the moon's vicinity, the Palyak turned off all non-essential equipment, including the camera, so all we have are simulated views of what it would have looked like en route, and so that is what you see here as it departs the vicinity of Earth, Earth's uh, gravitational sphere of influence. We are pleased to report that communication with the Palak Fuel Depot was constant throughout its transit, so there were no communication problems, though there will be communication issues when the Fuel Depot is on the opposite side of the moon from Earth. However, its uh, mere existence will certainly help communication with other moon missions in the future. Once it reached the sphere influence of the moon, the camera turned on and here we see a time lapse of its approach towards the moon and this is at uh, 1500 times actual speed. This of course is a momentous occasion for the EDB as it is getting its first view of the moon from its own cameras and uh, so a huge first for the for the agency and here we see the moon at a closer point in the Palyak's approach now at uh, 100 times regular speed putting some sort of fuel depot around the moon has been talked about for a long time now and many space agencies have considered it but uh, none have attempted it until now and certainly this is the most interesting use of a demonstration flight ever. The fuel depot's cost was uh, trivial compared to the cost of the actual rocket, so rather efficient use of EDB funds for this mission. Still though, we have to point out that the Palak Fuel Depot doesn't have a specific mission attached to it. In other words, we don't know what it's going to be refueling. So that is one significant catch. There would be two burns for the Palak Fuel Depot around the moon. The first is the lunar orbit insertion burn, and then the second is a tightening of the orbit, not really a circularization as such. but. The reason there had to be two burns is that the communication situation does not allow communication at the ideal point for lunar orbit insertion and so what the fuel depot will do is it will make one burn at uh, one side of the moon just as it's receiving the signal from Earth, initially receiving the signal from Earth, and then it will do another burn on the opposite side just as it, just before it loses the signal from Earth. And that'll balance out and bring it into a decent orbit. And so that's the plan. It's uh, not as fuel efficient as uh, we would like, but it is a fuel depot and is carrying a large abundance of fuel. And the agency did not want to take any risks with this uh, first attempt to get uh, well, the first attempt to get anything around the moon, frankly. So they do want this to be a success and would like to make sure they have contact with the vehicle during all of its essential mission points. And so here we see the camera now oriented towards the back of the vehicle with the sol one solar panel down so that we can continue to get good views of the moon. The other solar panel is still out at this point. They only retracted one solar panel and it really only needs one solar panel for m most functions. Uh, the other solar panel is mainly to drive the keythane detector on board. And here we are at the uh, lunar orbit insertion point. The engine fired as expected, however stability was not maintained. And so it took some time for the, for the mission controllers to regain control and to activate stability. Of course there is a time delay between 
between the vehicle and Earth. However, uh, there was some time taken to figure out the actual problem involved. And so we see here it drifting. Not, not a huge problem as long as the stability is re-established. In fact, eventually it was. as we see here and then the engine was reignited and so it turned out to be a very good thing that the burn was not pre-programmed of course uh, with connection to earth this means that uh, Jebediah Kerman aboard uh, Titan Station was able to control the camera I, albeit with a delay though uh, frankly we really can't tell from his movements that it is any more awkward than usual. This first burn point is rather high above the moon. It is approximately 500 kilometers and so that's why you get a very full view of the moon. It was not the periapsis. The vehicle passed the periapsis earlier when out of communication range. DDB will be interested in selling the rights to use this depot and perhaps uh, bolster its budget as a result. But right now, no space agency, including the EDB itself, is in a position to use it. There are no moon vehicles that can dock with a refueling depot like this. And in fact, since Apollo, no, no lunar vehicles that can dock at all. So. It'll be interesting to see whether this, the existence of this fuel depot will spur a uh, new era in lunar exploration or whether the fuel depot will simply go unused. And here we see the first burn going quite successfully as we continue to get uh, remarkable views of the moon. This first burn actually brings the vehicle into a tighter than necessary orbit on, on its periapsis side. Its apoapsis after this burn will be approximately 2,000 kilometers. Uh, on its periapsis side, it will in fact be crashing into the moon itself. Of course, the fuel depot will be conducting its second burn before it reaches periapsis and will then fix its orbit properly and thereby regain its periapsis safely above the surface of the moon. If it can't conduct a second burn, that will be a problem, of course. And there we have the shutdown of the engine for the first burn. And after half of an orbit, it ignites for its second burn. The next launch for the EDB is the Scotty module extension aboard the Saturn C3X. Uh, and in fact, it was just barely necessary to use the C3X instead of the Saturn 9. There were many people arguing that the module ex extension should be pared down in order so it could fit on the Saturn 9, which is considered a more reliable rocket and reliability being a uh, key here because the Scotty module extension contains a thorium reactor which will be shut down while uh, while on launch and reaching the station but will be uh, activated in orbit by uh, Kerbals on EVA. The, the payload also contains an antimatter containment unit which is also quite volatile. However, after a great deal of review, it was found that there was no way to reduce the mass of the Scotty module extension uh, to fit the Saturn 9. So the Saturn C3X was, was inevitably the choice. Launching a reactor into space in order to generate antimatter is, of course, a very controversial issue and thankfully the Kerbals are not signatories to any particular convention on that however they have done everything they can to address the issues of course with the excess payload capacity of the C3X not being used uh, the rocket would be able to boost the payload safely away even in the case of a failure in one of the stages 
uh, similar to what we saw in the first launch of the Saturn C3X before the gimbling issue was fixed. So there is that aspect of it. In all cases, the abort mode would be to to have it boost into into space rather than to fall back to the ground, obviously. And uh, here we get the signal for for shutdown. And uh, we read that the Paliak Fuel Depot is in orbit around the moon with an uh, orbit of 160 kilometers by 462 kilometers. We'll continue the discussion about the, the safety features on the Scotty module extension during that launch. And there are numerous, numerous factors involved in that. So we will simply say that as we lose communication with the Paliak Fuel Depot with Earth receding behind the horizon of the moon. Thank you for watching this uh, momentous occasion for the EDB. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this special report and we hope you will join us for the Scotty module extension launch on Tuesday. And with that, this is the EDB signing off.